Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another uh, tutorial episode. Now, we are on the surface of Minmus, and it turns out that we've collected science from the greater plains or whatever, the greater flats. But if you look, over there there's some hills. Well, it turns out that you can just fly over there using your jetpack and collect a little more surface science, collect some surface samples and uh, perhaps some EVA reports. So. This is kind of one of those core skills that you're going to learn on the EVA. What you're doing, of course, is using Shift to lift your uh, character up, and you're using W to fly towards it. Now, what I would suggest is you look in the top right and burn down your fuel until it's about, you know, point, you know, 4.5. That means you'll have used 10% of your tank accelerating. Uh, I mean, you can use up to 20% of your tank accelerating, but you have to realize this is a two-way trip. So you're going to have to accelerate up to speed, and then when you get close, you're going to have to slow all the way down. And then for the return, you're going to have to do the same. So whatever amount you need, you're going to use four times that to basically cover the distance. Plus, you're going to have to use fuel to keep your altitude up. So I'm just sticking, uh, watching my altitude and using the shift key to accelerate. Now, now there's approximately 550 meters per second of delta V inside a fuel tank. So using 10% gives you a speed of about 50 meters per second. If you hit the ground at that speed, it is very likely to be fatal. And I'm going to fly into a hillside. So I'm holding shift, lift myself up and pressing S to try and slow myself down. I have successfully avoided crashing into the hillside there, but it looks like I'm going to go for the highlands rather than, or the midlands rather than the lowlands or the slopes. There, a swift, uh, a swift approach was almost fatal, but just so you know how to fix these things in future, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, actually just going to show you common mistakes here. You're you going to really understand how far away you are when you're slowing down. Okay. Touch this scientist down and collect an EVA report. And it says I feel a bit like a superhero. A superhero which almost flew into a hillside. Uh, obviously, I can't collect more than one EVA report. Nope, i got to collect a surface sample. Crystal light grains, etc, etc. And plant a flag. Good to have a flag sitting around. So anyway, yeah, you can travel to any part of Minmus using the EVA pack. Or by walking. <laughs> but it's... It's going to be very tedious because once you get there, you then have to fly back because you can only carry two items of science. You can carry your EVA report and you can carry the surface sample. Then you need to return to the spacecraft. So I'm going to use the same approach. I'm going to fly back towards it, again, using about 10% of the EVA pack to pick up speed. And once I get close, I'm going to have to slow down. It's a good idea to pay attention to the distance because you're going to pick up speed and it'll take you a certain amount of time to pick up speed then uh, when you're slowing down you need at least that same distance to slow down so I'm uh, I'm gonna actually ignore it and just try to guess I wasn't actually paying attention despite telling everyone else to pay attention okay uh, yeah 700 meters that should be enough to slow down slow down slow down slow down oh yeah I'm overshooting I'm gonna overshoot Ah, oh dear, there it goes, zipping away underneath, wasting all this fuel. This is, this is why it's important to pay attention to these numbers, right? <laughs> Look at that, I've overshot by like 700 meters here, really messing things up. So I'm having to travel like a whole kilometer back. If you walk on the surface, you can walk without the EVA pack, but your top speed is, is one meter per second. So walking that 800 meters or so is going to take 13 to 14 minutes. But we're just going to ditch you know, head back. We have enough EVA propellant. Uh, if your EVA propellant starts getting really, really low, you might consider walking the rest of the distance. Simply because getting into a spacecraft when you have no EVA fuel is something that will test the patience of even the the most saintly and individuals. Oh look, overshooting again. I haven't done this in a while, clearly. <laughs> you will probably find that on your first attempts that you overshoot quite a bit here. So, yeah, don't don't spend too much fuel heading out to your target because it's very easy to overshoot and very easy to use up all your EVA fuel. Look! <laughs> this is just like a comedy of errors. I think it's because Bob's a scientist rather than a pilot. 
Jebediah or Valentina would not be uh, so comical in their attempts to return to the spacecraft. Okay, let's get on board. Now, if you have plenty of patience, you can do that for everywhere on the surface of Minmus. Equally, you can probably, with your fuel reserves, you probably have enough fuel to actually launch the spacecraft and land it on another location. But uh, I, all the same, I'm just going to send this spacecraft home. And we're going to follow the same trick as before. We're going to head towards the 90 degree vector, get up to orbital velocity, and then either in, well, insert ourselves into an orbit or just perform an escape burn, depending upon the configuration. You want to make sure, by the way, that you don't turn over too quickly. Sometimes you can find that you end up crashing into mountains, but this one looks just fine. There. Get it up to like 8 kilometers. That'll be good. Now we need to figure out uh, how we actually get home. So where is the planet Kerbin? That's our apoaps there, 12 meters per sec, or 12 kilometers. Oh, and there's there's Kerbin there. So, so I want to burn. Oh yeah. So I actually my apoaps is pretty much where I want to perform my escape burn here. So we're doing the same trick as before. We're gonna go in our orbit, increase the velocity till we escape. Uh, Minmus's orbit and set it so that we escape backwards along its orbit so that when we leave we're falling we're going too slowly and we fall down towards Kerbin. And you see again we have inclination issues to fix here so I'm going to adjust the, the inclination to make sure that we are as coplanar as possible because otherwise you're just wasting fuel right? This small amount of fuel that I'm spending on this, see how I've only increased the uh, delta V by a f by like less than one meter per second, but it has flattened out my trajectory and dropped my encounter with Kerbin down. So that's 50 kilometers, 7 kilometers. I think it needs to be a little higher than that. But that's pretty good. Okay, so now we're just going to wait for this to happen. And you know, I've realized that I didn't actually collect any science from around Kerbin on the way uh, on the way out, so I should collect it on the way in. Anyway, line up with my departure vector here, there. And we got a little bit of time. Let's EVA out and see if we can collect some new science locations. Uh, greater Flats, I think we already have. If I store that, yeah, it won't let me board with that experimental data. Let's wait until we hit these uh, foothills here, right? So a little bit of time accelerating. And now we're going to try EVAing over here. See, EVA will take the... Yeah, it'll take the biome. So that's Minmus uh, slopes. So we're collecting biome data. We're collecting, sorry, EVA data from the different biomes. And you could just put yourself into orbit and collect all that data if you want to min-max your, your thing, your science collection. Obviously, if you're min-maxing your science collection, you'd have done a whole lot more. You'd have done uh, surface samples from the space from the space center and things like that. But I'm just trying to get the interesting stuff here. Okay, so here we go. Oh, overshot just a little. Throttle up and get ourselves out of here. We're out of here. We're heading back to Kerbin. It's only going to take a little bit of time to do this. And I'm not even going at 100% thrust. In fact, I want to throttle way the heck down and just verify my encounter distance. You don't want it to be too low because that means you will come in too steep. And you don't want it to be too high because then you will just skip through the atmosphere. About 20 kilometers seems, like, seems good for a return at escape velocity, assuming you're just using a capsule. Okay, so now we just time accelerate to depart the sphere of influence of Minmus. There we go, there's Kerbin down below us, and you can see the moon there on its right. We'll just watch, wait for the nav ball to flip positions as we as, as we transition the sphere of influence. Uh let's turn the spacecraft as well because we're losing electric charge, you notice. We don't want to run out of electric charge. <laughs> and there's our transition. Great. Okay. So now we're in high curb in space. We can collect crew data. It's very round. Yes, it is. We can EVA. 
and collect an EVA report from out here. You've recorded your observations and you collect the data and all that stuff. Save it, collect it, return it, and return to the capsule. I think these, now we've, yeah, oh yeah, we've got, uh, okay, we've got to get stuff from the materials bay. And temperature report is useless. Uh, mystery goo? Mystery goo has a tiny amount of data in it. Oh, and the pressure. Yes, we're going to do. Pr we're going to find out what vacuum is like because low carbon vacuum is completely different from high carbon vacuum, obviously. So you back out and perform the little science dance as we collect this data. I think we might be moving relatively slowly, and that's what's causing the camera to flip around. Sometimes you'll find that the camera wants to do weird flips as you rotate as a, your pilot moves. It's, um, well, you can fix it sometimes by adjusting your camera option using V. Okay, come on, did we get that? I think we did. And fly over and get the pressure data. Yeah, the camera is just like turning randomly for me. How interesting. I'll also note that you can see the flag that you've chosen is now on the Kerbals on their, uh, on their R RCS packs. Okay, let's get in there. And take the data. Yes, we've got our pressure data. We've got all the science, and now we're going to return. And we can. We are actually going to have to collect um, pressure data from low carbon space as well, because that's a new thing. See, this is me just like trying to get all the science that is available to me. Obviously, without trying to make the whole thing too boring. So we're going to time accelerate down, and what we're looking for is we want our altitude to be 250k or less. 250k or kilometers is the altitude at which we switch from low carbon altitude to high carbon altitude, and that's where all the science experiments switch uh, state. So we didn't collect low carbon science data for the pressure sensor, so we'll do that on the way in. And we're falling down. Look at the planet Kerbin again, rotating like a beautiful marble below you. If you get, there's various um, graphics updates which will make Kerbin look a whole lot prettier and add clouds. They definitely vastly enhance the experience. Okay, so now 250, collect, so we've got temperature. Uh, we're going to do a crew report. We've already got that, doesn't matter. And. Is that worth it? It's not really worth it. And it's, yeah, it's not really worth that either. We'll keep the data nevertheless. We have a small amount of time. Yep, no temperature. Yeah, it's just pressure data is really the only thing that I care about here. Yes, a full, full complement of pressure data from low carbon orbit. Note that we are falling down at about one kilometer per second. So we have just about two minutes to get out of the capsule and maneuver ourselves into a position where we can collect this. Uh, this is again one of those situations where I would suggest quick saving before you leave the capsule. Yeah, we've got that one, we're not going to collect anything else. Get inside, and that's us. So we're now preparing for terminal descent. Two minutes out. Point the spacecraft retrograde. Obviously, the capsule is going to descend on its heat shield and everything else will be lost. You can try building this with uh, its own parachutes and try recovering it if you want, but I'm not doing that because I've got plenty of money, so I can afford to discard some bits and pieces. I can afford to sacrifice these uh, spacecraft parts to the god of rockets or something like that. There we go. 100, 90, 80, and 70. So now we're back into the atmosphere. So we're just going to fall and let gravity do its task. Everybody was complaining that I keep cutting out the re-entry, so I'm going to leave this re-entry in, largely because it's consistent with the length of the episodes I've been going for. That's, oh, look, that's us falling into the shadow behind the planet Kerbin. So you're going to see this thing streaking across the night sky like a ball of flame. Fun fact, actually, in real spacecraft re-entry, the actual flare, the, the heating front, the shock front, is actually quite a distance away from the surface because the surface is where the air has been pushed down to the same speed as the aircraft. It, but it bounces out and creates like a bow shock that is some distance away from the surface itself. 
And then that is so hot that it is a, it's like a blowtorch radiating heat back into the spacecraft. And you see the, the ablator is doing its business here to absorb most of the heat. There we go. You can sometimes actually get like little pockets on the other side where the airstream rejoins and uh, heats up as well. There is a fantastic video from the SpaceX engineers at, at a GPU conference where they explain how they're doing computational fluid dynamics using uh, gra you know, graphics cards essentially. And they have some great diagrams showing uh, where shock fronts and everything actually occur inside spacecraft. You see, tell that uh, this re-entry is going to plan because I am just uh, nattering away about something that's of tangential interest at best. Yeah, SpaceX, they did a great talk about how to do the fluid dynamics using graphics cards and it's well worth uh, looking it up. They actually uh, credit Kerbal Space Program in a couple of places, it's quite amusing. Okay, and you know what, I think we're actually very close to the, the launch site. Yeah, we're over the ocean, so there's no data that we need to collect here. We're going to wait until the velocity drops below 250 because, as I understand it, the next version of Kerbal Space Program may have more stringent, uh, more stringent limitations on when you can deploy parachutes. And I believe 250 is the target value we're going for. There they go parachute out. It's semi-deployed, slowing us down pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, we crew report just in case we'd come down over some place where we hadn't previously collected science data. And there's the probe capsule on top, giving us the, the stability that we needed. Yes, yeah, scientists are by far the most effective, most useful class in the game right now. Pilots are of marginal use. Yeah, oh yeah, look, there's the launch site right there. You see that? The Africa style shaped continent. That's uh of course Ali's capsule still in orbit there. Yeah. Well, if if we had adjusted our entry path, we might have actually landed near the space center. It's hard to predict these things to be honest though. Okay. Touchdown, splashdown, recover. And now we are going to have so much science that we could probably fill a swimming pool with it and do another splashdown. Oh, look, we have 13, wow, 13, I don't know, lots, lots of science, more science than we know what to do with. That is brilliant. Okay, so for the next episode, uh, I think that by now we will have unlocked all the stuff required for docking. And indeed, we have a mission for our contract to dock two vessels in orbit. It'll get us about uh, 90,000. So that seems like an excellent option for next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.